G'day, my name's James. I'm a single dad and I'm sailing around Australia with my two young daughters. And if you're ever wondering how far you can really send it, you know, I, I think we got really close. If you're gonna watch any of our videos, watch this one, because we're about two and a half months into the Kimberley, the first Kimberley trip at this point. We had a whole litany of issues coming up with the boat that really made it the decision obvious that we had to get out and uh, start making our way as quickly as we could to Darwin. We're heading out, we're gonna fit through this channel and get into the Hunter River. Yeah. As we just picked up a fair bit of speed, eh? I've just got Hallie driving the boat. We've gone to the other side of that channel. Just a bit further over that way, darling. Over that way. Oh yeah, actually, put the boat in gear. That's why. Good job. Yep, perfect. Yeah, it's a little touch and go. I can't film it, but uh, we're just coming out this channel and, and she's taking the... She's taken the um, the helm while I got a bit of footage. Thanks, darling. I got it. I got it. I got it. So just one step closer to Hallie driving the boat and me taking a back seat and relaxing. <laughs> I can't wait. There's just so much ground and so much country here to explore. Like even though all this is too shallow at low tide, you know, you can see massive cliff faces and massive gorges. Like the elevation's a lot bigger in this, this area of the Kimberley. And it seems that, you know, these mountains are just getting bigger and bigger. There's just so much character. Every area we go to, each, each spot, just, it just changes and, and keeps evolving as we move through it. It's, it's incredible. The incredible thing is because of the elevation, most of these creeks are probably going to have water. Maybe not so much this time of year, but certainly any other time there's going to be water up all of these creeks and Aboriginal art. Like there's no way you have mountains of this quality and not have, have Aboriginal art in them. You know, they're, they were just as attracted to these, uh, these areas as we are. We managed to get out of that really tight channel quite easily. There was plenty of water below us, but we unfortunately had to sail past all these amazing opportunities to, to go exploring in the Kimberley. But, you know, that's part of it. You just can't do it all and see it all in one trip. And once we were out of there, we managed to get the sails up and start heading into the wind. up and got a bit of wind but I'm still motoring just because um, we're at the top of the tide and I would really like to get in before it starts pushing back out of the river. There's nothing worse than trying to beat up into the car and I really don't want to push the, uh, the motor too much. coming into the Hunter River are absolutely insane. This whole embankment is just nothing but cliff faces. And we're sailing straight through the middle of it. They must be hundreds of metres high. Unbelievable. Poor right, I just had a horse fly. You right, you right darling? Yeah, they're a bit annoying bloody horse flies on the boat. We're gonna anchor back up here on the way out so I can fly the drone around. It's, it's pretty bright and we're just, um, we've got a good breeze to head up the river. So we're gonna head up as far as we can and then stop at two spots on the way back out. So behind me, these cliffs here is actually an offshoot from the Hunter River. You can sail the boat straight up underneath there and, have, and you've got gorges either side. So we're gonna check that out on the way out. We're gonna head further up the river and try to get to the waterfalls maybe day or two there, come back and then check out these gorges here and then we're gonna be up the front where the uh, the entrance was. So hopefully we should see everything before we move on and God, we need to start moving because um, we're gonna end up in here forever.
her on the head two times. So on top of the issues that we've had with the fridge and the solar, food supplies and things of that nature. I went and did a, just a routine check of the engine just to see how it was looking. Um, and I was actually looking to see how I could plumb in my water maker that we've got waiting in Darwin, which is gonna be a, a game changer. I've shattered an engine mount. The other three are on the way out. I've got an oil leak coming from the, um, the sump. Now uh, it looks like a gas is gone. I'm not sure what it's gonna take to repair that. I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, I think the engine mounts could be a major, major problem. And then on top of that, our outboard is also, when you put it in gear, it's also going crack, crack, crack. I tried to take the prop off and see if it just wasn't sitting right, and uh, that wasn't the issue. So the outboard is still getting us to and from. Sure, it's still got plenty of drive, but I think the more I use it, the more I'm gonna cause some internal damage. And I've got some advice as to how to chock up those engine mount, because it's actually the rubbers that have, have shattered and broken away, not the bolts themselves, but if they do shear, then um, that's gonna be a really big problem. So I'm gonna chock the engine block up with uh, a bit of wood, and I'm gonna wrap some stuff around uh, the mount to try and support that but it's actually running smoother than it was so I think it was a bad alignment that caused that to break in the first place because it's actually running better than it was and it's not pushing on my prop because I was getting a knocking sound coming from the prop that's not there anymore the end summary of all of this is that the motor needs some major attention in the big boat the props not looking good food fridge solar the whole thing is just it's getting too much so we are we are definitely we're gonna leave tomorrow we got one i mean the anchor's already down so wait apparently i kept saying prop instead of drive shaft i don't i've got some issues but all those problems really came to a head at the worst possible time. And to, to paint the picture before I go into it, we traveled up the Hunter River, up into all this ground that was too shallow to anchor, hoping to find a hole that we could stay in for the night. And as we're coming through this shallow channel, the second mountain blew, causing the engine to completely drop and put a whole heap of force on that on that drive shaft so we could hear this grinding as I was trying to motor. So we had nowhere to go, tire dropping and no motor and no possible way to, to move from where we were. So we've headed down the Hunter River. I've anchored up in this absolute shocker of a spot. We're right in the middle of a channel. It's not deep enough. We're gonna to touch the bottom at low tide, but the other engine mount gave out in the engine and um, I could hear the, the prop shaft grinding. So, out, out. So I think we're gonna to touch the bottom by about 300 mil. The whole engine has given out on one side. I didn't realize that the bolts didn't fully support the motor. So I've got to go and try and find something to prop this freaking motor up with because currently I'll snap my drive shaft if I keep motoring. Oh. So that there is supposed to be like that. That's the one. And the other, so you can see a bit of the other one in the back there. And that's our oil leak. That's the oil leak from the motor. As I said, I don't think the oil leak's the biggest drama, but I need to prop this motor back up. <sighs> ASAP, hopefully before we touch the bottom. And this is how much the boat's moving. So just gonna make it pretty tricky. I still haven't eaten today. I don't even, I can't even cook lunch now. God damn it. All right, so considering this is dodgy as hell and I've got two and a half, and I've got two and a half meters and two are on the bottom. Both those engine mounts are shattered. So I've managed to hoist it up off the boom and it's not looking pretty like I've just grabbed a bit of rope and I've hoisted up onto one of the winches and I'm now wrapping rope around where because I actually spoke to a guy yesterday about this and um, and I'm wrapping rope around the where the engine mounts used to be. Get out, out! <sighs> so I should be able to cinch that up nice and tight. And then if I can do that for both, see, uh, I've absolutely bombed the boat up onto the winch. It's dodgy as, but I'm not even thinking about if I can't do it because I'm just going to have to do it. There is no one that's coming to get this boat. Not from here. Oh, thank you, darling. So, this is what we've got. That's excess rope. 
and the rest of it's bunched up in there and that cable tie is just to keep it tied off. And I've done the same with the back, so they're tension really tight. I've also, that is the old motor from my anchor winch, which I'm not gonna use, I'm just gonna buy a new one. And I've just jammed that, rammed that up underneath the, uh, the motor. So that's holding most of the weight. So I'm gonna start the motor and just see if I can actually put it in gear without that being a problem. Um, and see if we've got forward thrust without it whirring. And I'm also just gonna watch when I release this rope to see if it actually drops the engine drops. So I might actually even set this camera up so I can watch it back. Still as you can, darling. No. That's my ignition. I've well and truly done my dash, I think. I think I'm just gonna make my way out of uh, out of the Hunter River slowly and then just start fastest route towards uh, Darwin, I think. Yeah, it's gonna, it's the only way. That's the trouble. That's the trouble I've found when you don't give up easily. It's where do you draw the line? Like, if you're not willing to quit, and especially like I've realized that a lot more is possible than I ever thought. So I'm in this really weird place of I don't know when to quit and I always think it's gonna be okay. And I don't know when to stop, like. Yeah, most people would have stopped before this. And um I just keep, I keep going and I keep fixing and I keep, I keep moving forward where I can, but, you know, if that didn't work, we would have gotten out of it, but that's, and we would have gotten the boat out of here, but it's just sheer optimism, you know, like, it just would have taken time. I'm just lucky that there's so many people around me that, that, um, that are really keen to help and, and we've just been so fortunate. Honestly, that fix was out of control. You know, I'm just checking the depth, watching the water drop and drop, thinking, oh my God, we're gonna be laying down in this channel that's got a heap of current coming through. And like, you know, all of that, it's not all necessarily the end of the world. But now that I've got the motor running, we had to get back out of the river to try and find somewhere deep enough that I could actually drop anchor and stay the night. Even though I managed to get the, the motor going, we didn't have enough time to, uh, to get out of where we had to, where we were forced to anchor before, so. We are on the bottom. The boat is landing right over. Um, and I mean, it's low tide out on the coast, but I think it's still gonna get lower because it takes a bit of time to get up these, these rivers. So it's gonna take a little bit longer for the water to come up and us to get out of here. But at least I can clearly see the way out. A definitely good idea to, to hug, the, uh, hug the mangrove on the way out. And we also, it looks like that thunderstorm is moving the opposite direction, which is fantastic because I did think we were going to get hammered with a storm on top of being uh, on top of being beached on a sandbar. So. Really, really nice. Um, it's amazing how uncomfortable it is. 
when you're on your side. So once we get a bit more water, I'm gonna pull the anchor and try and head back out and motor into the incoming now that I have a working motor. We just had our dinner on the side, so the kids are pretty set. And they might just do a bit of cooking when we get there. Hey, what do you reckon? You like the boat on the side, Hallie? Bit different. And there's a lot less footage of the kids up here in the Kimberley because they're indecent 90% of the time because it's so freaking hot up here. So it's made it a bit tricky to film. But um, they are here and they are enjoying it very much. Do you like the river chicken? Yeah. Yeah? Mmm. What about? We've actually seen, I've actually, we've actually kind of seen a few tadpoles, but Dad probably hasn't seen them, but. I have. Yeah. Look at that storm behind you. Oh wow. Holy demoly. Oh, wow, that's my gift. Oh away. my look a mole Yeah. <laughs> oh my moly, look a mole Now just so that we're all on the same page, all the things that went wrong in this trip were such massive learning curves. And since all this has happened, we've actually done a major refit in Darwin that cost thousands of dollars. And we did the trip again and it was so much easier because all the systems were working. I'm gonna do a video on all the upgrades and everything that I did on the boat to make that possible. But it's very hard to know how underprepared you are when you think you've got everything covered. And the one way to do that is just to, to find out the hard way. And that's exactly what we did. The return trip, as I said, was, uh, was a completely different story because I had everything, everything prepared as it should be. In a lot of cases, the only way to learn these lessons is to, um, to go out and have a crack. But I think some people see making mistakes as, as negligence or ill preparedness. I don't see it that way. I see it as, a, as a, every mistake I've ever made has led to the most incredible opportunities of my life. Um, and it's a really hard way to do things, but that seems to be my method of operation is trying to do things in the best possible way I can and just learning the hard way, adapting and moving forward. And it may be a little ugly now, but where I'm gonna be in 10 years time from being willing to make mistakes and accept responsibility for how things have turned out, I think it's gonna put me light years ahead. But anyway, the tide did come up, but it was already past nightfall, so the girls were asleep and I motored back up the river and we found a place to anchor up for the rest of the night. And on top of that, through some great investigation, I actually found a barge that could bring us supplies into the Kimberley in a very short period of time. But that was gonna mean sailing another 200 nautical miles with a busted motor. It has been an incredibly productive morning. I've organised new engine mounts uh, to get brought out. I've organised the food to get, I've done the click and collect order so the food's coming out. We don't have to get there in time to meet the barge because they can leave it there for us. And the mounts that I'm getting are also cheaper than the actual uh, standard Yanmar ones. Um, and they're the ones that I'm replacing. So the reason being is because the two remaining mounts both look like that. The back one's the same, and they're all deteriorating. Don't so, me in the arm. shush! So, between those busted mounts, the ones tied up with rope, and the motor that is supporting the engine block. I just bit the bullet, and it's cost me a thousand bucks, but um, that's for four new mounts. So when I get them, I should be able to lift the motor up, replace the mounts, align the motor, put it back in, align it, and, uh, and we should be away. And I also think that the oil leak was actually from a loose nut, and also the oil filter having a, a slight little leak of oil, and I think that's actually just run down the casing and made it look like there was a really bad engine leak. So I'm gonna top the, um, top the oil up, and we're gonna try and make it to Honeymoon Bay to get these parts and fix our motor. We just have to get there. Well, for now, the engine's holding in, and I've readjusted that block that's underneath to try and minimise how much that prop is rubbing, because you can actually hear it. It's going, dog, 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 dog. 
but it's not as bad as it was. Like when I actually broke the mount, it was, it was, you could hear it shearing. You know. So we're mobile, and we're just gonna, we're up the, um, the little side estuary that we were gonna go check out on the way in. So we've come up this little side river and the Hunter River, and uh, we're gonna definitely look for some waterfalls. There's not really much. It's only a couple. It's only I think about a mile and a bit in, so not too much extra stress on the motor. And that'll sort of be the last one of our. Um, you know, we're not going to be going up any more rivers. It's going to be straight to uh, straight to Honeymoon Bay, or that bay next to it, so we can meet up with this barge. But it's just it's really good that we do have a motor, at least you know to some extent. Jump in, down. Come on. Wait, Isla, wait. What you got, oh, Hallie? You bring monkey? What? What? So this evening's job is going to be to figure out why the engine, the outboard engine is still knocking. So I'm going to lift that up on the boat and see if I can have a crack to um, maybe try and realign it. See what we can see. We've made it about 20 metres from the boat and there's a croc just in this little estuary. Oh. Try and get a better look of him. Baby croc isla. Hey Bubba Croc. Little fella, I reckon I could grab you. What do you think Isla? Should we grab him? What's that? See the crop? Yeah. Little Baba. One must be gone, yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon that's a little baby croc? Yeah. Cause it's a little. Yeah. See those mountains? I see them. Mountain, mountain, mountain. Oh, the Hunter River for me has been the highlight of the trip so far. I think this is absolutely it is breathtaking here. So the only thing that would make it better is if we caught a barramundi or maybe saw a big, big croc. But a barramundi would be really nice. Isla. Hey. Oh, we just hit the bottom. Oh. That cloud, I think, mean, looks like a unicorn. Which one? That one there. Next to us. Next to us. It's one 
of the most incredible parts of the world. Oh my God. It's unbelievable. So you can really start to hear how bad that, that outboard is sounding. It's actually it turned out to be a broken gearbox and there's a whole story about that and I, you know, apparently I, I learned how to fix a gearbox as well, but that's a story for another day. Time to rock and roll. I still haven't fixed the outboard because I was up all night just thinking about stuff. So we're going to slowly make our way up the, uh, up the creek and see if we can find a waterfall, get some water and also wash our clothes because we're getting a bit feral, hey? Yes, yeah, it Yep. What's incredible about these gorges is that there's there's freshwater trees, there's paper barks and gums right on the banks of the mangroves. Which blows me away because it's not there's not a major river system behind there. You can see by the by the cliff face, but uh, it's obviously getting enough fresh water that um, that those plants can grow. Oh, we've just seen on the drone we've taken a wrong turn, so we're going to head back and take the main channel and try and get deeper in this gorge. But I think I can see where the water's going to be coming from. Let's go for a little explore. Oh wow, look up there. There's just these massive gorges behind us and there hasn't really been anywhere to get up into it because it all just looked like really small mangrove track. But this, this is a river, it's probably dry, but that's gonna get us up and we've got a bit of time to kill before we can get up the end, so. We'll go and have a look and that'll get us up into the uh, into the rainforest. I can see these massive trees already. All right, shoot on, girls. And my day. Um, I didn't bring yours. You can just carry, jump on with me. Oh. Baby carrier. Yeah, I don't mind if I go in the baby carrier. Yeah, cool. I am on a walk. Yeah? You are a pretty wicked explorer, hey, Isla? Yeah. What about me? You too. Mm. I mean, but I'm a monkey sometimes. You are, that's what all the... Because I'm like a, a I'm actually like half monkey and half person. Really? Well, that's yeah, good. Yeah, because I'm really good at climbing and stuff. Well, that's good because we're going into the jungle now. Yeah, and I love eating mon yeah. and I love eating bananas too. Yeah? For real life. I ordered some bananas. How about crab? He's red. The bar the Hallie, the barge is bringing, um, bringing bananas down. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, look at that crab. He's black and orange or red. Where did he go? There he is. He's about to go on Oh, yeah? Shh, 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 guys, do you ever stop talking? She got better days as eyes. No, 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 no. Rainforest. Yeah, awesome. Well, we'll check out. Hold that rope in, and then I can grab our stuff, and I'll chuck baby and oh, yeah. um, I'll chuck Isla in the baby yeah, carrier. Yeah. Yep. Okay, you can let go of that. Okay, you hop up. Just chuck that back in the tinny. Right, go up and grab that. Um, let's try and slip over. If you stand on the barnacles, you'll get a bit of grip from the barnacles. Oh, except for that bloody wobbly rock. Now nah, we got to get up and check that out. Maybe go on those not slippery rocks. Yeah, I'll try not going on the slippery rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. We just I just want to check out behind this rock. It's just a massive rock fall in here. It's a butterfly city. Yeah, because there's lots of butterflies around. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh, think yeah. Oh, butterfly. Look at this massive rock. Big rock. Yeah. This is during the wet chicken, all this would just be absolutely raging with water. Mm. The full blown. 
I mean, I don't think it's a river. I think it's just runoff. Check it out. Yeah, the tides. Oh no, that's no, that's fresh water coming down, chicken. That is. Wow. Just a little bit of underground still coming through. Yeah. Incredible. Just the tiniest bit of fresh water. Well, if there's water here, there is definitely going to be water further upstream. Right now, Dad, it looks like we're heading north. Yeah, we are, darling. Yeah, this is just um, just an awesome little spot to check out. It's just the size of everything. It's like, like something out of Jurassic Park. Everything's just so big. But uh, it's much cooler waiting here than stinking hot out in the river. Nah, but you can drink that, I reckon, Hallie. If you really had to. Don't, because there'll be heaps more water further up. But uh, it's just so incredible that this is right on the mangrove, you know? You've got mangrove right there, and then these colossal freshwater trees. Incredible. You can take your hat and your sunnies off, chicken. We'll grab them on the way back out. Oh yeah, a bit more water, chicken. Running water. Yeah. There's no ticks, there's no leeches. Even, you know, people carry on about the crocodiles and like, the crocodiles are so timid. I mean, I guess maybe not timid, but they, they really do keep to themselves. They're just, uh, they're, they're definitely a non-issue. The currents are great. We're down to about seven meter tides at the moment, um, which is cool. But you know, when you've got 13 meter tides, you can jump on the current and it just shoots you wherever you want to go. So I'll be missing them the further up we get when we get down to like five and six meter tides. But you know, hopefully the springs, we still get a, a decent sized tide. You gonna go up that way or up this way? Yeah. Look at that, look at the Any bats in there? Any bats in the cave, Hallie? See all the leaves are already disturbed? Hallie, well you've walked on it all now, but see all the leaves are already disturbed? I think animals have come down here for a drink. I can hear running water. Right, we've got to be really quick. We'll go check that out. For the web. And, uh, and then we'll go back and get the tin, because otherwise the tin is going to be, um, we won't be able to reach it. <sighs> yeah, you hear that? Ooh. I tell you what, we might have to come back here in the wet. Oh. Whoa! It's even, look, it's even coming off these rocks here. I reckon it's from these recent rains inland, chicken. Well, we've been getting all these afternoon thunderstorms, and I think there's water coming down. That looks like new water, like. Oh, whoa! What? Shit, we might have to. This isn't even, this is just like some spot that we pulled up at. It's not even, oh. it's nothing, you know? A little hole in the wall. Okay, we'll, we'll get on to the top of the waterfall, then we'll turn back, all right? All right, but I'm gonna walk in the water. Yeah. That is, that is so oh. nice and cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is so nice. Um, yeah. You yeah. wanna dip your feet, Isla? Um, from the waterfall. Yeah. Oh. How's that? There you go. Just drink it from my hand. Drink it from my hand. Do you want someone not? Dude, just drink it from my hand. Look. There you go. See? For sure. Pull cool your head down. I, yeah, I Go have know. a quick look. Stop talking. Sorry. This is just really exciting. Oh no. Can you help me that? Yeah, I just want to have a look. Oh, oh. bloody hell. Oh, yeah. Hey, don't push me off. Wow. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> dude, it just gets better and better as you go. I can't turn around. Look. Look up there. Quick, quick, quick. It'll be crazy. Imagine if there were monkeys here today. Oh, imagine. Whoa. Look, Hallie, Hallie. Oh, bloody purple butterfly. I could build my home here. 
No, no, we're not really gonna live here. <laughs> Caves. But this spot up here, that's where you'd Oh, that's incredible. Little animal cave. Oh, wow. yeah. Go, Hallie, go. Go, quick, quick, quick. I mean, we could have just anchored the boat up properly. And when we saw this place, um, I, I, I was in the That's what I mean. And then that means... That's what I mean by the magic steps. So yeah. Did you want to get some to dad? Oh my yeah. god. Like, I was yeah. going to get some. I was going to get some Chill out. There. Shush. Look at these rock skills. Yeah. Oh, right, we've got to run. We've got to draw the line somewhere, girls. Frog City. Dad, but... I'm going to get a fella. Oh, not right now, chicken. We've got to go and get the tinny. <laughs> okay. We've got to draw the line somewhere. Otherwise, we'll end up getting stuck here. Tinny's safe, but it's close. Very close. Well, we got back just in time, so we'll head further upstream and maybe the other guys will turn up, but um, if not, we'll have a solo mission. And I think these, these cliffs up here are gonna be, this gorge is gonna be unbelievable. It is so hot. I'm just quickly running up here to have a check rather than going dragging the kids all the way up here in the heat and then there's nothing up here. Oh my God. I do think we're gonna be hard pressed finding water in here though. I can't hear any waterfalls anymore, which makes me think we were just listening to rustling in the leaves. Chasm. Chasm. down there. Riverbed, just bloody nothing in it. Dry than a nun's niggers. Well, as astonishing as this is in here, there's uh, there's no water. Um, not that I can see. I'm gonna have to try and throw the drone up and see if I we'll find where we're going. Otherwise, we're gonna get out of here while we can before the tide comes up too much and try and um, get back to that other spot. There is, however, a lot of these this fruit. I think it's native nutmeg or what but they smell very floral and I'm pretty sure that's what the fruit bats eat because when we were sailing when we were motoring the other night there was thousands of fruit bats all came out after dark really impressive to see but I was just wondering what they're eating it's got to be that look at that one there Isla oh I can't you have to break it open. Right? Let's go past the frogs. Can um, I get try catch one? Isla, get in, get your legs in. All right. Um, we might be able to go back and try and find your binoculars, chicken. No, it's too hot for the girls. It's absolutely stinking. We sort of. I didn't quite plan on going on such a big mission without so much water um, and not finding water as well. But I've got the kids under there. Are we all happy? Yeah. You yeah. happy? I want another one in the middle. No, nah, you, you'll be right. I might actually put a bit of, uh, I might put a dip on the water and chuck it on you too. Huh? So that's going to get us back. We haven't got too far to go. So let's 
keep the kids cool here. I'll, I'll dangle this one in the water. Oh, that'll keep you really cool. Look at that. Speaker, have you turned it on? Yep, All right, tunes. What have we got? When I look back to the situations that we'd found ourselves in on that trip, I almost can't believe that it happened and how it, how it all unfolded. And I wonder how the girls will remember all of this when they're older and they're gonna know exactly what I am outside of the YouTube, all those small moments at home, they're gonna know who, who I am for, the, for better or for worse, how I've coped under stress, how I haven't coped under stress. Because obviously, you know, I'll put the highlights on YouTube. And really, I just wonder what they're gonna think of their dad when they get older all things considered at the end of the day. And I think that's really important to me. It's not all glamorous, but fuck, I can honestly say I've given it absolutely everything. I guess the point of what I'm trying to say is, is that it's not perfect and it's not supposed to be perfect. It's about being there and experiencing something because it matters and it matters to me, it matters to the girls. And I think it's important. And that's why I put the videos out because I think, I think it is really important. Here we go. Jocks. Good on you, girl. Oh. Let's pull the anchor up. We're already starting to drift downstream, but we've got a little someone who's uh, come to say goodbye. Hey, fella. It looked a little bit bigger than the one yesterday. I don't think the one we were looking at yesterday just here was that big. That's a, uh, that's a decent sized croc. Oh yeah, she's a fat girl. But uh, we are already starting to pick up speed. So I really should start steering the boat. Look at you. Hey, big girls don't crawl. Good size yeah. crop, eh? Hey? Yeah. yeah, look at us. He's looking at us. He's looking at us. <laughs> Supposed to be taking it easy on the motor and we're getting absolutely railed. We're leaning lean right over. I've done about six four tacks and uh, we're just caught in an absolute washing machine I'm just trying to fly to get around this corner into safety and once we do we'll be protected and we only went like five miles up the road but uh, there's shit going everywhere we haven't been rocked around like this in a while I've sort of um, you know not really packed away for that sort of a, that sort of a sail <sighs> never looks as bad on camera but Pretty freaking horrendous. Okay, so just keep 
doing what we can do, I suppose. And we just we just sort of stepped straight into it. I can't even let go of the till long enough to get the uh, the shade cloth down, so it's had to stay up. We've got no choice. What's worse for the busted engine mounts than healing right over and putting all that weight of the motor on it while it's running? I don't care, I don't know. Well, we're so close, we're just about to come into the protection of this island. We've not got long to go, and we've made it around the corner that I was trying to get past. It just was not letting me through before, so I had to tack right out again, and that's my track here. Just not having a bar of it. It's a shame we didn't find water today as well. We got 200, we got 0.2 of a meter underneath the keel. I checked, I checked Bing maps to see if I could see if there's a channel coming in through here, because the other guys have already gone in. And uh, I couldn't see a damn thing, but then I've gone back over and checked uh, Google Maps and it's actually right up against the island. So, I was heading up into there and I need to come deeper. Oh, nice! Found it. Oh, no, it's shallow again. We've arrived and we've tucked in, dropped the anchor, but it's a really, really narrow channel. And, uh, and the sandbar's coming up, so you can clearly see what we were trying either. You can clearly see what we were trying to uh, to sail over without much luck. We've situated ourselves in a good little spot. I'll just wait for the sun to go down a little bit more. I'll fly the drone so you can really see where we're where we're stopped. Size. There's torch on charge. Good spotting, Harry. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe, you dirty dogs. Mm -hmm.